Good morning. It's snowy morning. Yeah, good snowy morning. How do I get out of here? Let's lock stuff up because it's going to be, I think, my best bet is to follow that. But I don't know if I can get through there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, oh yeah, 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 oh, please like and subscribe, yeah, yeah, that good, yeah, yeah, ha, ha, ha. they want me to go but it's working hopefully there's no hidden hazards anywhere Lumber yards are pretty good at not having hidden hazards, but... Oh, there's a ski hill right there. Mm -hmm. Right in front of us, all across the street, there's a ski hill. Yeah. Cool. I know you said there's a ski hill this way, but... You already stopped me. I don't know if I can get going again. Spinning tires a bit, but it's manual. You're a good car. You're good. Just stop moving. Stop moving, please. You're good where you are. I am not stopping at that stop sign up ahead. If there's traffic coming, I'll stop, but if I stop, I'm not getting going again. Nobody coming, nobody coming. I know how slippery it is. If I stop here, there's no way in the world I'm getting going again. Okay, because it was tricky enough to get going just to get to the railroad. Let's go home. Arrive in 11 hours and 45 minutes. We have 11 hours and 34 minutes. We're not making it home today. I'm not driving fast. If I was driving full speed, I could make it home today. I mean, maybe the road gets better and I can go faster, but I don't want to feel like I'm in a rush. You were just talking to the boss man. He said Cornell was very slow. He said Cornell was coming down hard, so. At least have a few more hours. Let's see what happens. Fred Shorjo will check webcam. Service 8.39, so it took an hour and a half. We could have loaded yesterday. Then we but we wouldn't have known about no tarping, so I would have yeah. struggled to figure that out without any time. And there's nowhere to park. I wouldn't have anywhere to drive to sleep, so it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. Wouldn't have worked if I had loaded yesterday. Only reason I have this load, and they're like six foot bundles. Okay. I think. I think they're six foot bundles. <laughs> yes, six foot, foot bundles. Yep, yeah. six foot bundles. The only reason I'm loading it is because the train track is uh, washed out, and they want the lumber down south. And I am going to be just slightly overweight for U.S. load, but I got a full tank of fuel. So when I hit Montana, I'll make sure I uh, run at low tank of fuel. And I'm gonna run in Canada most of the way that way. Yeah. 
You're not going to where you thought you were going. No, I'm actually not going to Billings, Montana. I am going to um, Shelby, Montana, where Welker Farms is. So I'm going to deliver there. I'm going to leave very early Sunday morning, like 5 in the morning, because of time zone difference. I'm like that in Kootenai. Yep, Kootenai Pass. I'm going to have a lot of... You don't have yep. to chain up with Kootenai for the last two days. So hopefully I don't have to chain up, but as of right now, if I was going now, yeah, I'd be chaining up. And if I had not requested this Friday off, I would be headed there right now. I would just go to Edmonton and then head south and then uh, reset in Montana. Well, no, I'd probably get partway back home, but I wouldn't get all the way home. I'd have to reset away from home, but, but it's Jess's birthday this week. Well, for you guys, two weeks ago. I do know that the storm is north and east of the Georgia as well, so you would have gotten a big snowstorm from there still. Alright. Now we're on actual highway. Well, just keep the diff lock off. Not the diff lock. Power divider. I always, every single time I get that wrong. And I just came from cold outside sweating, so my, I'm definitely going to have frog in my throats here. Throats? Apparently I have multiple. That might be the issue right there. I'm just going to say the one thing I realized last night, this room is a heck of a lot busier than we ever imagined. There are a lot of logging trucks around this road. I, like, I must have heard a couple hundred. Like, it's a busy road. If you wake up at night, all you hear is truck after truck after truck going by. Empty yeah. northbound, full southbound. You must run work night shift because of the, it's colder and then the ground doesn't. Yeah. The ground is frozen and you can run better on a colder road. Or, yeah, you can run better on muddy or cold, cold roads. Highway 27, just north of Fort St. John. James. Fort St. James. <laughs> Fort St. James, British Columbia. There's a lot of places. Never been here before. There's a lot of places that start with Fort. It's hard to keep them all straight. A lot of them are Fort St. Fort St. James. We'll be going through St. James here in a bit. I mean, Fort St. James. I wonder if they call it just St. James here. Definitely running no cruise control or uh, engine brakes today. My legs are going to get tired. If I remember right, the speed limit was 80 here. Well, the boss man told you to go safe. Boss man said drive safe. That's exactly what we're going to do. Pulled up, all my tarps ready, my bungees thrown out, everything ready. Go to put on the safety harness. I'm like, huh, no safety harness. Okay. And the cable going to the safety harness is knotted up and locked. Okay, I'll go inside and ask. Nope, they're not doing any tarping. Too many people didn't want to use it because of COVID. Okay. Right, okay. Whatever. I'll call dispatch and see what they want. I just told dispatch. It's, I check bypass dispatch and went straight to straight to the fleet manager. He goes, well, I guess that's not a tarp load. Hammer down. Okay. I just look at it. It was cool. technically supposed to be on it. Train. It's supposed to be on a train. It's not. <laughs> Woo! I'm spinning tires. I don't know if this guy just pulled onto the road or if he's just driving that slow. He's driving that slow. It's fine. 
he's allowed to. It's a logging truck. He's getting up to speed limit now, so I think he just pulled off. So we are doing this with no engine brake. At first, I think the fine is not high enough. A lot of truckers be like hundred dollar fine to do for no engine brake. Oh no no no! I know. I, I would use a darn engine brake. I know. I would take the hundred dollar fine. I know. The only reason I'm not using engine brake is because I see. Forget the sign. I'm like. I'm using full engine brake in town, no matter what the sign says. I don't care which town in North America. I'm using my engine brakes. It's like we see that a few times. I'm like, hundred dollars is whatever. Whatever. Like I'd rather use engine brakes and not crash into someone. You have to drive quite a bit slower if you're not going to use engine brakes. Hey, he got a smiley face. Where's my smiley face? I don't get a smiley face. Look, You get a smile. Uh, Jeff smiled at me. I'm cute. <laughs> Fine. Not the same. I got it. I'll get a digital sign for you. <laughs> Fort St. James. Fort St. James, right here. And lake. And they got a lake, yeah. I wonder what the lake is called. I see it coming up on maybe Stewart Lake. It's something Art Lake. Can't read it. It's now showing up all the way on GPS. It's going to be Stewart Lake, because we're on Stewart Drive right now. Okay. Yep, Stewart Lake. I think we'll pull over at that rest area that we slept at last night. Yeah. We'll load some here there. We didn't know it was a rest area. No, we were looking on the map and said, hey, there's a pullout over there that we should be able to fit on. It's the closest one I can find to the customer. We'll pull in there and say, like, oh good, it's a rest area. Sweet, win. We don't have to go run into the bushes. It's the only spot really that I saw coming up here that you can yeah. slept. Worked out very nicely. It's like, now we know. Ooh. Lock everything up, put off the throttle, and then hit those buttons. I got this. She is slipping. That just says St. James. Just says St. James. Well, I guess the locals just say St. James. They won't say Fort St. James. He starts slows down waiting for me and say, like, yeah. the law says I am the one that's supposed to yield to you. I am too big not to follow the law. As I ran a stop sign at the very beginning of the video, but I am sure any cop sitting there would not give me a ticket for running that stop sign. If you're a cop, let me know. Would you give me a ticket for that? Speaking of cops. <laughs> that was interesting last night. That was interesting last night. 
Look at that paint job. That's cool. I like that. Very lot. colorful rainbow color. I don't know what it is. A daycare maybe? I don't think any daycare. It's not a... It looks cool. I like it. Um, yeah, the intersection just... Just north of uh, Highway 16 and onto Highway 27. All of a sudden, there's all these yellow flashing lights. I'm like, construction, wide load, something's going on. Look at the popo. Oh, there's a popo right there at the, mo at the traffic center. Perfect. <laughs> um, so I slowed down. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of lights there. And the big rig in front of me just start, was starting to get going, so he came to a stop. I'm like, I'm just going to put my four-way flashers on and come right down slow. Something's going on. Get down to a stop, and I'm like, oh, wait. Thank you. Thank you so much for going. <laughs> if you hadn't gone, I would have hit him. Oh. He's just going to turn around there. Woo. Thank you. Give him a big thumbs up. I'm not gonna get stopped. I am gonna hit that truck. If I'm in the horn, he is right away. It's my fault. But it's just like... if, if, if I can, s he doesn't want to get hit either. Yeah. So luckily, he goes. Wait, that guy's gonna hit me. Okay. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Woo! Because that would be my fault. It wouldn't be any damage to my truck, but it would put a huge dent in the back of his. <sighs> like, I thought I was going really slow. Not slow enough. I'm like, oh, okay, he's turning off. Hit the brakes. Nope, there are no brakes. <laughs> Woo. Anyway, our story. Um, came to stop and realized there was like five, six cop cars parked there and none of them had the red and blue, red and blues on, only their yellow flashing lights. They did not want us to know that they were cops. Yeah, there's flares on the ground. Flares, well, there were not, yeah, there were like electronic flares. Yeah. All over the, down the center. But you didn't see them to get closer. Until you got close and almost it's like, what is going on here? Come to stop and they want to see my driver's license. Didn't care about Jess. And... Waved another car right through and it didn't stop them at all. It's like, okay, you guys are looking for a white male. You guys are looking for someone. Yeah, it's obvious. And they approached every and direction. Once they had my ID, he goes, to, What's your name? I'm like, It's right on the freaking ID right there. But they want to make sure I gave them the correct ID. Yeah. And where do you live? It's, like, it's on my ID too. Basically, he's asked me enough questions to make sure that my ID is who I say I am. And I'm like, you guys are looking for a white male. <laughs> this is obvious. Yeah. And they were parked like every which way, ready to go. Yeah, were, Not, someone were sitting in the trucks. Like, they were ready to go if someone hit did a huge turn and took yeah. off. Yeah, they were ready to go. It's like, we've got a manhunt going. And I'm like, when we're sleeping a few miles north of this, uh, let's keep our doors locked. I don't need to be hijacked. I, I gotta thank that guy in the pickup with a plow. It just saved us from having an accident that I would have been at full pack. I mean, it's not my fault. I, I thought I was following safe, but legally, it would be at full. Following distance, large today. Very large following distance today. Yeah, agreed.
I kind of turn into the oncoming lane part way, and I'm like, the rear end sliding into the ditch. If I don't head that way, we're going to be stuck here. Close the highway. Yep. Not just instinct. I didn't think about it. I just did it. Oncoming traffic has room. Moving over. Well, that's one near miss. We should fill that out on the uh, uh, on icing when I come to a stop at the rest area. Yeah, you have to keep an eye on the time for your safety meeting too. Yeah, safety meeting at 11, that's uh, two hours, a little over two hours. Two hours, yeah, two hours on the other safety meeting. Hopefully I have cell service. Straight line, you can get up to speed limit. I'm not there yet, but anytime there's a corner, you gotta really slow her down. It's definitely sketchy as one of them. It's still dark. The road is slippery, you can see, and there's loose territory, so it's watching. Yeah. There's a snow plow. Blows off, great. Yeah. He can't do anything to black ice that's here. Uh, he spreads any sand, it's just gonna blow off. The sand will just blow right off. So he can't make this road better than it is right now. All he can do is what he's doing is keep shoveling the yeah, shoulder. Yeah, keep, keep the sand, or keep, keep pushing the snow off the road. I don't have any snow on it. That's about it. We're driving on solid black ice. Really, really take our times around time around corners and obviously following distance. slow enough, I didn't even get a uh, hard stop alert on. <laughs> Come on, it's like the one time. Yeah. The video should be sent to dispatch, showing what I did and didn't. Uh, oh well. Yeah, I, I have video of it. speed around this. This kind of weather, I'm going to go 20 below the suggested speed. The sign just had a uh, diamond with no speed on it, which means 10 below. So I'm going to go between 70 and 80. And it's usually the good black ice speed. It is 20 below suggested speed. If it's just a sign that it shows a corner, it's Oh, you suggested speed is 90 since it's 100. Does that make sense? Got a diamond coming up ahead, so that corner as well. We should do 90 since it's slippery. We're going to do between 70 and 80. I've never been up here. 
here before. Obviously a lot of trees. if we see the rest area in time because if it's too slippery I won't be able to get spot before. Yeah. It's like I know they usually give you two kilometer warning but that's the thing we're trying to slow down. You're a pump warning? Yeah, it's just a pump warning. Not too worried about that. Six, even with it almost snow, completely snow covered. At least I can see them popping out here and there. Now we were doing 40 kilometers per hour because I just felt like I was flying down the highway at 40 kilometers per hour because I couldn't see the road. And I was on the connector 97C. Climbing out of Beachland. That area is prone to fog from Beachland to the summit. It definitely is, yeah. You can also get snow in the summer, basically. Yeah, we've had snow in July up there. Yep. Extra money for 
and pay truck drivers X and three hours if it takes that much. So basically, track okay. your time. Yeah. How much longer? Did, how much longer than normal did it take? That makes a sense because Jeff was saying the other truck from Madison was eight hours. So. Yeah. So they're starting to get it kind of hammered out. Three hours is three terrible. Four, three to four hours more yeah. than what it should be. Which is well, it's a lot more. Like the taken to Vancouver would be five hours. Now it's not. Now it's eight hours. Yeah. So that's thirty percent. No, percent more. That's fifteen percent more. I don't know. I'm not good at math. It's a lot more. No, it's more than that. So five hours, three hours is more like sixty-six percent. No. Three. Three out of five has got to be sixty-six percent. Sixty-six point six 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 six. Okay, okay, okay. So that so it's so it's sixty-six percent longer of a drive. Okay. I mean sixty-six point six 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 percent longer of a drive. My math could be wrong, but that's... Yeah, it's definitely a lot longer of a trip. And I don't see that easy enough anytime soon. I think my math is wrong. One third would be 66. Well, one, two thirds would be 66, so... I'm not, my number's wrong.
nobody behind us but I don't see it anyway. Stop that yoke. <clears throat> move a little forward. Move a little forward. Move a little forward. Well, I know what my safety topic is. Making near miss is easier to fill out. That is my safety topic today. So when filling out the paperwork, it's the same paperwork as if there had been an accident. So it's this long, long, long form to fill out. You have to go and figure out where. You have to put the near miss stuff. So I'm going to suggest making a new form that only has a near miss. Basically, date, time, who you are, what equipment you're in, and what happened. That's it. A simple, very short form. I bet you we would have more people filling out near misses. Because I talked to our safety guy and he goes, one of the things that our company is lacking is enough people filling out the near misses. It's like, let's make it simple then. I almost gave up on the thing. I'm like, I don't have time to fill out all this. It was just a near miss. Nothing happened. It's all right. It's a... about coming down the hill into Vanderhoe for the 70 zone. Things can close very quickly. I'm trying to warn people about the flood warning. That's what they're trying to do right now. How far those out? Sumas. Sumas flood warning. Yeah. There comes another snowplow. There's a lot of snowplow running. While we were stopped there, a snowplow came by. He is 
spreading sand. Yep, he is dropping sand, so. They're going, maybe it's warm enough. It's now minus 1.5, so maybe they're going, it's warm enough that we should be able to melt this. So it's time to start sanding. Off our lights, and we're completely covered up. So note to self, next time bring gloves with. That's how you go out there with their gloves. I'm like, what? Well, they'll do that. Clean off the lights, and then go use the restroom after. You guys do the math. <laughs> it's like, yikes! <laughs> uh, right, so now I wear gloves. Pickups here have snow plows in front of them. That was a rock in the windshield somewhere, but don't see a crack. We're actually losing time according to the clock, so we're for sure not getting home today, but we'll be close. Might be in the Okanagan Valley. We'll see, we'll see which road we go. Good morning, Juan. Thank you for reporting your near miss this morning. Stressful moments like that can really get the heart racing and at times result in extreme shifts in our mood, so I hope you are doing okay. I would like to discuss this a bit more when the opportunity allows. I would like to determine if there are any defensive driving techniques we can advise others of based on your experiences this oh morning boy. that may help others avoid similar events. Give me a call when you have some time. I'm an extension 230. Thank you for being alert and having a quick reaction time and doing your part to avoid an accident. Your professionalism is appreciated. Have a safe day out there, Brandon. Brandon, 230. Good morning, Juan. Thank you. Extension 230. I'll give him a call. Pressure's on, slower down. But something I have to say is like, Zerk was so professional. The safety team really cares. It's just, it's a good company in that way. I know they was dead, your back. Ah, tow truck. Or not tow truck, snow plow, snow plow. Caught up on a snow plow. Yeah, 
that's one of the things I really love working with this company. Uh, your, your boss has your back. I have gotten every single day I have ever requested off, off. And safety too, every accident. And then safety accident, they're like, they're, they're following up on this. So um, I know when uh, Satko, in fact, when the law came in that all companies had to have safety teams, including Satko, most companies made a safety team just for, okay, let's make it legal, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And over time, the Satko safety team has become more and more and more a real team that they really care. The owner cares about. Yeah, yeah. Because he found out that if we start taking safety serious, he starts saving a lot of money. Tow truck trying to do a recovery by the pull-off card lock in Vanderhoof. He's in the east or eastbound lane. Okay. Eastbound. By the co-op. Vanderhoof co-op. Yeah. Tow truck. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Today, it's one of those days you want the radio on. <laughs> It might take us a while to get to the um, scale for following like this. I think I'm too close. Coming downhill like that? Yeah. I think I was too close for going downhill. Uphill, I've got lots of room. Downhill like that, probably need more room. If one of those cars decided just to stop. I would consider passing the plow, but the two cars would make it possible. I'm sure they would pass the some plow if they could. So. Nice, put some sand down here. Yep, put some sand down on the downhills. Enough cars behind us, I don't need my forward flashers anymore. Unfortunately, I have to type a load that's lighter on the drives and heavier on the trailer because U.S. law wants to drop that rear drop axle and transfers all the way to the drives. So it'll be fun going over the Hoopies. Get over to Shelby, Montana. It'll be fun. Definitely want to hit it during the daylight hours. Yeah, I'm just debating where to um, record a video. I've done Hoopie Pass a couple times now. Too. Yeah, maybe I'll save the video for as late as I can until it starts it's like at 3 o'clock before it gets dark. That'll be the Friday video. Tomorrow's video is probably going to be driving along the Okanagan Lake, I guess. What did you say about route we're taking back? Yeah, I don't know what route we'll take back. Once we get close and look at the time, where yeah. the best place to sleep is. Well then, how bad is the connector? And which road is worst conditions, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure how far south the storm is. Doing about 60 kilometers an hour here, maybe a little less. Yeah, anytime we go downhill, he's laying down a lot of sand. Well, gravel. We we don't lay down sand here, we lay yeah. down gravel. Which means rocks in the windshield, but you need the gravel for the traction on the hills. So, I used to be mad about it. It's like, why are you not laying down sand instead of all this big gravel? And then I became a truck driver and realized, yep, need that gravel. <laughs> 
It's the only way you get over those mountains if they're graveled. Thank goodness he I, I was in the horn and he was sitting there and, and I'm just sliding toward him at an angle and uh, he saw me coming in his mirror and he just pulled forward and goes nope I'm not gonna turn here I'm gonna go a little further down the road and so we're all good yeah uh, Brian didn't call me he told me to call him on a message so so Brandon Brandon yeah Yeah. Well, if he hadn't pulled forward, I would have hit him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Brandon about that uh, filling out a near miss. We were talking about we need to fill out more near misses. Me and Brandon were talking about it. And... Yeah. And... I almost gave up filling out the form. It's way too complicated. It's like the full accident report. I'm going to talk to the safety committee and see if we can make a really simplified uh, near miss form. That's just like date, time, who's the driver, what happened, and that's it. Just a really simplified near miss. And I bet we can have more people filling them up. Yeah. Sounds good, thank you. Bye. <laughs> that was uh, Dave, fleet manager. That's what I like. Company every hell is up is nice. I could have done anything different. I don't think I could have done anything different. Hindsight is 2020. Uh, I should have gone some, for more uh, oh, distance, yeah. but I thought I was getting lots of following distance, but it was just slipperier than. I knew it was slipperier. Yeah, I can't van something else there, Crusher. That hey, wasn't that cube van there, Klukas, something else? Yeah, I think they should really simplify the form. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I heard Dave typing in the background as I was talking. Right. <laughs> He's already making an email. You pulled off of that little store beside Cobb Lake there. At Brookside. Yeah, it's probably a good idea that he gets off the road. He, uh, he wasn't doing too good. Someone not driving very well on the road? Yeah, some kind of cute man. Uh, you know the one we just passed? Yeah, I think. Going that way? He had both his hands at 12 o'clock. I'm like, Oh, you, holding you, off for dear life. I'm like, you don't have control. Yeah. Even I know that. <laughs> you don't mess no, up. No, no, no. You need to be relaxed driving. If you cannot drive on this relaxed and you're stressed out, you shouldn't be driving. Pull over. Yeah. 
Yeah, but even on the steering wheel, 12 o'clock Anytime is Anytime you're white knuckle driving, it's time to pull over. Like, yeah. I am super relaxed on this, even with that near miss. Um, it might just be me. I don't... I, I, I don't get adrenaline rushes from stuff like that very easily. I think it was back to mental and firefighter. Yeah, maybe I was firefighter enough years that I know what really gives me an adrenaline rush. Yeah. I've had really bad shakes from adrenaline rush. And I know what that's like, but this stuff, this is nothing. It's like steady hand. Like, I've had adrenaline rush where I wouldn't be able to hold. Like, but, but, you know, you, there's a difference between this and real danger. And I let people get a serious adrenaline rush, rush when they hit a pigeon on the road, right? They, they're too shaky to drive after hitting a pigeon on the road, right? So we all have different experiences of where our body kicks in the adrenaline. So me, I think maybe yeah, like just does the firefighting experience has lowered that for me. I, I would say anyone driving on a highway and you're white knuckling it, it's time to pull over and relax. Every 15 minutes at least, pull over, get completely relaxed, drive another 15 minutes, pull over, get completely relaxed. You're in serious danger if you're driving on a grid. And the answer is not to go so slow that you're impeding everybody else impeding traffic. Yeah, and if you're going so slow that you're impeding everybody traffic, it's dangerous, you're gonna get rear-ended. So you don't want to go really, really slow either and block all the traffic. That's really dangerous as well. So maybe it's just best to uh, drive another day. I think, I don't know if it's because of you or not, but I think I've learned from you not to do that. Like, I already have my license at home, and like, I don't feel comfortable with this or that. Okay, yeah, the weather's not comfortable. You know, we can just say, I don't need to go buy that thing today. I can, yeah. I can get away with them buying that one thing today. So maybe it's because of you training me with that mindset that I already have that mindset. Right. Slow down over time, you get more comfortable with more weather, but don't push it. Well guys, I think we're up to our hour, so as soon as we get through the scale here, hopefully we're closed, we'll call it a day. If there's anything else exciting, I might hit record and add a clip in the end, but we'll see. Keep the uh, Osmo ready, just in case you see something crazy. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the comments. This scales will be open because we're all waiting to turn. The waiting to turn? Yeah. You sure? Why else would they? They're all coming in this way. See yeah, they might all be going to scale. Yeah. yeah, it's open. You're probably right. And welcome to all the new subscribers. Hope you guys enjoyed my little uh, near miss. Those do not happen often. That's probably the first one we've captured on video. And I'm kind of random to the new people. And yeah, Jess, my professional passenger, she's not here very often in the last year, that last two years. Basically, yeah. Thanks to uh, travel restrictions, she's not allowed across the border, but that may be opening soon and she might be coming with more, more often. I'm not following those directions. Just looping around the scale. It's okay. It's telling me to keep going west and do a U turn down the road. No, no, no. It's like, Garmin, there's better options. It's okay, Garmin. Oh, that's kind of cool. How is he? Okay, no, he's he's westbound. Okay, so westbound, he can loop in yeah. that way. Okay. So I noticed on that truck where it says Kenworth and Solstack with the company name. Yes. That, yep, that, that's, that's an option. So cool. That's yep. pretty cool. I don't know how much extra money that is, but instead of having Kenworth written on the yeah. exhaust, you can have your 
company name written on the exhaust. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Turn right on Highway 16. How about no German? for the logging truck to clear before I go. Where would the light be? I don't see any lights. Do you see lights on your side? Oh yeah, there I had it. Uh, yeah, it's like, I don't know where the lights are. Just cleaning all his lights off to clean my lights to be cleared. The same with the flatbed. Yeah. Cleaning my lights before I go through scale. <laughs> Don't want to get a ticket. Luckily, I cleared mine. Good to know that. That's probably what they look for very closely. For the rest here, yeah. I'll let the snow plow go because he's coming in quick. so much for watching I mean, you guys rock Adios. this video is brought to you in part by the letter C and these YouTube members cookie starts with C what other things start with C oh who cares what other things C is for cookie and that's good enough for me thanks for watching I'm done, I'm done, I'm done.